Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new here. <laughs> if you are new here, hello, my name is Mara Starling, I'm a first language Welsh speaker, I'm originally from Anismon, the Isle of Anglesey, and I'm also a Welsh folk witch and a Celtic polytheist. Here on my channel, we talk about all things to do with Welsh Celtic magic, Welsh folklore, Welsh witchcraft, and just everything to do with the magic lore and spiritual landscape of Wales. So if that interests you, stick around. Today we are talking about a goddess who is very dear and near to my heart, and that is Rhiannon. If we must narrow down Rhiannon to a domain that she rules over, Rhiannon is often associated as the goddess of sovereignty, and also as goddess of horses, She's also a goddess who is associated with grief and overcoming trauma and anxieties. And today we're going to delve into the lore and history surrounding Rhiannon and who she is. Rhiannon, Dywies Sovraniae Thetir, Caseg Wen Hidolis. Rhiannon, the goddess of the sovereignty of the land, white mare of magic. <laughs> Rhiannon is arguably one of the most popular goddesses from the Welsh side of things, popularised, of course, by songs such as Rhiannon by Stevie Nicks, and also by various uh, neo-pagan movements where Rhiannon was incorporated as an aspect of the goddess. But today we're going to delve into the origins of Rhiannon. So without further ado, let's get started. First, we're going to look at Rhiannon within the mythological texts in which she derives from. One of the core places to look if you're looking to study Rhiannon and who she is within the context of Welsh law is, of course, the Mabinoki, or the Mabinokion as it's published under usually. My personal favourite version of the Mabinoki is the Sean Ed Davis translation, so if you don't have that one, go grab yourself a copy. The first time Rhiannon appears in the Mabinogi is in the first branch. Now, Puich, who is a prince of Dyved, a prince of a kingdom within Wales, and some of his courtiers, head up a very special hill. Now, this hill is special because a legend states that anyone who ventures up the hill and looks out to the landscape below will see something rather marvellous and wonderful. Lo and behold, they see something rather marvellous, and the marvellous thing that they stumble upon whilst looking out in the distance is an ethereal-looking maiden. This maiden is riding upon a white horse, and she instantly is the most beautiful thing that Puich has ever laid eyes on, and he decides right there and then, he wants her. <laughs> Who he sends his men to run off to catch her, but they just cannot catch up to her, no matter how hard they try. And so Pui tries himself. He goes off and tries to catch up to her himself. And Pui is stumped when he realizes that no matter how quickly he makes his horse run, he cannot catch up to this fair maiden. And when he's looking out towards the fair maiden, he looks in astonishment because he notices that she's not going any quicker than a trot. How? How can this maiden be riding by so idly, so carelessly? And he just cannot catch up to her. Nevertheless, Poich continues to chase after her as she just trots sedately past. Finally, finally, Poich gets the idea, well, what if I just call to her? What if I just ask her, please, will you stop? And so he does, and she stops. I always interpret the moment that he does this as Rhiannon just kind of turning around and going, you know, you could have asked me to stop ages ago. <laughs> Why do men never think to ask? <laughs> Puich and this fair maiden get to talking, and it turns out that this fair maiden is Rhiannon, who is visiting from an otherworldly kingdom. And she says to him that the reason she is in his kingdom at this very moment is because she's actually looking for him, because she wants to ask his hand in marriage. Anyway, I won't go into the tale in too much depth here. You can go read the Mabinogi and get to know the story yourself. Later in this tale, all sorts of chaos ensues at Puich and Rhiannon's wedding, where Rhiannon's ex turns up and, through some sly trickery, manages to convince Puich to agree to allow Rhiannon to marry him. But via the help of a magical bag that Rhiannon gives Puich, they manage to trick the ex back and get rid of him. As I said, read the Mabinogi, learn about these stories, get to know the stories inside and out. They're 
fairly interesting, if I do say so. Another interesting tale featuring Rhiannon is a rather sad tale. Later in the Mabinogi, Rhiannon and Poich finally give birth to a son. Unfortunately, however, this son disappears in the care of Rhiannon and Poich's maids, and these maids, being convinced that they will be reprimanded for losing the child, decide to stage a rather gruesome looking scene. They decide that the only way to stop themselves getting into trouble is to frame Rhiannon by making it seem as though there was a struggle, and by putting blood on Rhiannon's face. They use the blood of puppies to do this, and they manage to convince pretty much everyone that Rhiannon cannibalized her son, that she literally ate her own child. Regardless of being innocent, Rhiannon is given a punishment, and she takes that punishment quite humbly. One wonders if perhaps Rhiannon was also convinced that she did this heinous act. The penance that Rhiannon is issued is that she must sit at the kingdom gates and she must recite the tale of her heinous act to all travellers who pass by, and she must also offer her own back to the passers-by. She must carry them like a horse from the gates of the castle to the front door. Eventually, however, the child is found and returned to Rhiannon and Puich. Such luck. This child is named Prederi. But in that tale, Rhiannon goes through an immense amount of trauma, I'm sure, thinking that her child is dead, possibly thinking that she was the cause of the death, and then having to go through these horrendous penances because everyone believes that she cannibalized her own son. Rhiannon also appears in the third branch of the Mabinoki in later tales. The third branch is very much filled with convoluted war and disaster. One of the main stories in the third branch talks of a magical mist that descends upon Wales, and everyone who is in this mist vanishes, not to be seen again. The land is empty. The only ones who survive this magical mist are Manawitan, Prederi, Kikva, and, of course, Rhiannon. No animals or anything even remain after this mist has descended upon the land. And so eventually, the gang, they head off into England to try and make a living for themselves. It's rather a complex story, worthy of its own video, really, and not really one that I can get too in-depth into here in this video, but it is a tale that I recommend reading up. So those are some of the main roles that Rhiannon plays in the Mabinoki. She is presented as this magical, otherworldly entity, almost, who has certain abilities, such as the ability to ride on a horse with such speed without looking like she's going quickly at all. And, of course, she owns various magical tools, such as the bag that she gifts to Puich, which has basically bottomless qualities. So speaking of her magical nature, let's now talk about Rhiannon as a goddess. Like most of the characters in the Mabinogi, Rhiannon's role as a goddess is highly debated. The texts themselves don't really specifically say that she is a goddess, and so from an academic perspective, many people don't see how some people like me might see her as a goddess. There is some evidence that points towards the notion or the idea that she might be related to other deities, such as Epona or Rigatona. And of course, as I mentioned, she has otherworldly magical qualities to her, elements of her character that denote that she is somewhat more than mortal. It's understood that the Mabinogi, the myths and legends of Wales, might hold echoes of older beliefs, of older entities and deities, so Rhiannon might have been a goddess at one point, or she might just be an echo of an older goddess who existed in the landscape that we now call Wales. Regardless of her authenticity as a goddess in antiquity, Rhiannon is certainly revered as a goddess today by modern pagans and witches. She's seen as a goddess of horses predominantly, but she's also a goddess of sovereignty. Her story very much corresponds surrounding this idea of her being this sovereign noble lady. She's deeply intertwined with the land and the landscape itself. Within modern paganism, she's seen as a caring, maternal goddess who understands pain and trauma due to the things that she's gone through. She must have been deeply saddened by the sudden loss of her son and then being blamed for it and not really being given a moment to grief and find solitude in the fact that she has lost her child. 
She took the burden of a penance of a crime that she did not commit. And for that, she is a powerful and strong magical and spiritual ally to call upon when discussing things such as grief and pain and trauma and loss. She is a queen, a sovereign of the land, and she can aid us in connecting to the sacred landscape and seeing the land as innately sacred. Trianon is a powerful and enigmatic goddess, and I have walked alongside her, revered her, and worked with her many times in my practice. She is powerful, strong, and she will transform your life if you work with her. I'd like to read to you a little prayer that I created for Rhiannon. This is a prayer that I often recite to myself when I'm sat in a special place in Wales, or sometimes when I'm just alone at home and I'm in need of a little guidance and support. Rhiannon is that maternal figure that I call to when I'm in need of comfort, or when I'm in need of understanding not only the sacredity of land, but the sacredity of me and myself. She enables me to feel more confident, and my deep personal working relationship with Rhiannon has involved overcoming anxiety, self-doubt, and pain. So now I invite you to close your eyes, take a deep breath in and out, and listen to these words. I will recite the prayer in Welsh and then in English, and a written version of this prayer will be available to you down in the description below. O Rhiannon, diwies sovraniaeth y tîr, caseg wen hydolus, swynafu i fod yn llawn o hyder a'r nerth, swynafu i ddatglwyfo o tristwch y gorffennol. Rho cymorth i mi, rho aed i mi i fod yn gryf. Rhiannon, cerdda wrth fy ymyl, cyfarchaf ti, bydd yma gyda fi yn amseroedd tywyll. O Rhiannon, goddess of sovereignty and of the land, magical white mare, empower me to be confident and powerful. Empower me to heal from the traumas of the past. Support me. Aid me in being strong. Rhiannon, walk beside me. I call to you, be beside me in the darkest of times. Thank you so much for watching today, I hope this video was enjoyable to you, and if you'd like to know anything more about Rhiannon, do feel free to ask me some questions down in the comments below. For those of you who are unaware, I do have a Patreon. My Patreon page is a place where I post all sorts of other exclusive content that I don't really post anywhere else. So if that interests you, click in the link in the description below to join us today on Patreon. My patrons get access to an exclusive Facebook group, as well as exclusive content that I post as often as I can. But overall, those of you who support me over on Patreon enable me to be able to continue doing what I do. I am so grateful to my patrons, and as always, huge apologies for not being more consistent with my posting, but I have decided that I would rather post content that I'm happy with than push myself to be constantly uploading. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you very soon. Check out my other social media profiles, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and all of the above. Thank you so much, and I will see you very soon. Bye!